Good evening! And I have to be a little bit quieter than normal because it's rather late. <laughs> so, good evening everyone and welcome to a very special edition. A very much like midnight edition of Vector 3D live streaming. And welcome to everyone who wouldn't perhaps normally be able to make it to one of my live streams who perhaps has never seen one live before because I normally do them more suitable for European time zones as opposed to American. So I'm sure there's many of you who <laughs> normally can't and have taken the opportunity. That's exactly the point of the stream today. I should be clear, this probably won't become a regular thing because <laughs> starting a live stream at 11pm is probably not sustainable, <laughs> especially after a full day's work. But there you go. I'm really looking forward to carrying on with the Boron 2.4 build. Yes, that's the thing. So before we get stuck into it, I do have to let you know it is sponsored. So big thank you to Big Tree Tech and Philofarm. So we've just got a, a short segment to explain that. This video would not have been possible without our sponsors, Philofarm and Big Tree Tech. So a big thank you to them for supporting Vector 3D. You can find out more by just watching some more, or you can follow the links in the video description. So before we get into the actual building itself, the building, before we continue the build progress, I guess, going to cover a couple of updates. Obviously, for those of you watching live and haven't had the live opportunity before, hopefully you've seen at least some of the previous builds I've been doing for the Voron. But in terms of maybe more useful for those watching it after the fact, there have been some things that have happened between the last stream and this one. Uh, I just need to move this out the way. Uh, so, one thing that we covered last time is the bed plate. Now, I had a... I noticed that there was not a mounting location specifically for the... in the corners for the th thermal fuse. So those holes should be tapped. They've actually been drilled out to 4.2 millimeters which is exactly right for an M5 tap. So as it turns out, I did have an M5 tap. So I've tapped one corner for M5. So probably should do both, but I haven't. I've just done one. So that's one of the changes I did between last stream and now. While we're in a part of the process where the bed normally would be assembled, because I'm having to move it back and forth all the time and maybe rotating it for camera and all that kind of stuff, I've kept it kind of off for now and I'll install it a little bit later on. Uh, the motors and harness kit have also been delivered. So we've got, uh, not that one necessarily, but we've got so a bunch of motors. They're all LDO motors, although they're not sponsoring. That just happened to be what I purchased. So we've got the four Z motors, and I've swapped those out. So the motors for the Z already all sorted. They're all been swapped out. The XY I've not done yet. These are still the original ones. I'll probably, it looks like they're going to be really easy to do even once the build is finished. So I may leave those for now and we'll deal with those when we get to the, all the kind of electrical wiring, harness kind of stuff. Hopefully that's not going to be a really poor decision that will bite me. So that's the plan for those. Oh, so Daisy, try not to drop anything. And of course we've got the harness kit. So this is just, we've got a full harness for everything here, as well as a bunch of extra connectors and stuff that come in this full kit. The links for this uh, in the bill of materials, they're not directly in the description. They're not sponsoring. So there you go. If you want to know what I've got, the bill of materials is where you can find that. It looks like people are still joining in slowly. Obviously, everyone's a little bit surprised that I'm live streaming at this time. So <laughs> you don't need to adjust your set. This is, in fact, live at 11 p.m. UK time. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Zeb Merch is installed. The last thing is I printed some extra parts. So with that harness kit, I've also got a Z end stop PCB and XY end stop PCB. 
So because I have those PCB end stops, I also need some slightly different parts in order to mount those. So I've printed off an appropriate bracket for the end stop uh, PCB, which is, I mean, half of it's the same and half of it just mounts the PCB, the end stops slightly differently because they're like both attached on one PCB as opposed to screwing in two individually and wiring to those. Uh, and then the Z end stop part I've uh, reprinted as well. That's going to be pretty difficult to see. It's all rather small, isn't it? But yes, so it's just kind of a little bit different at the base and it'll mount that PCB instead of the normal method. Uh, yeah, it is a fairly low-cost kind of cheap plastic. I wouldn't I don't know whether I can recommend it or not. Uh, Cost-wise, it's really really low cost, which is good but it's And it is actually really easy to work with but it's not that stiff. So It's up to you uh, Yeah, I think that's most of the changes between then and now I'm just going to screw this into the frame where the old one was in fact, maybe we could put that PCB in here. That might be a good thing to do. Because this part should probably be done at this point. So maybe that's the first thing we're going to get started with. And then we'll carry and kind of go back to the instructions and carry on from where I was at before. So let's get everything close up. Everything's covered from last time. So now we're moving on to this time. I've already needed two cups of coffee to set up for the preamble. I've had one cup of coffee, like seven o'clock, and I'm hoping it's going to last me through. I am expecting this to be <laughs> quite difficult. I imagine my concentration might go at some point, but we'll uh, we'll find out that when we get to it. Cross that bridge when we come to it, as it were. So it looks. I mean, I'm not sure how much there is in instructions. I think there might be, there's a GitHub page for this end stop kit. And i be honest, I've not looked at it other than printing the part off. Uh, but it looks like I'm gonna need a couple of the screws, the, um, the self-tapping screws. And I might need a little drill as well. So we'll get that out. This apron, I've even got a fan on me today. It's just so warm wearing an apron to do this. <laughs> it's bizarre. Right, so let's get close up and have a closer look at this. So I've already press fitted this. It was much more difficult to put in than this design. This one was very well printed on a Voron. This one, not so well printed. I used the Mark III, I think, or the Rat Rig actually. So just used a clamp to press it in. Now I've got to fit this PCB on the bottom. So obviously like the original design, it's like a, the little switch is going to go right in at the base. And uh, did you have, <laughs> take bets on what kind of shorts I was going to be wearing. So that looks like it's going to fit in like that. Although that's a bit of a tight fit. I wonder, I think I've pushed this shaft in a little bit too far. Uh, so there are some links in the description, by the way, for the sponsors, as well as for instructions from Voron, as well as my tools and stuff that I'm using. In fact, annoyingly, these are not, you can't really get, there's only one shop that provides these as a full kit. Normally they're sold as individuals but they are around if you need them. Hopefully you can find them yourself. So that goes on here. That goes here, I think, but this seems a little bit like it's not gonna help that much. I mean, the, the parts on the PCB are sticking out so far that this geometry is not gonna do much to uh, cover that. I guess maybe they want you to clip them off a bit. Not sure quite what the intention is there. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, it's going down onto a plastic panel, so I might just ignore that piece of the base. And hopefully these self-tapping screws will uh, go into here. Hmm. The holes don't line up particularly well. I'm not too sure why. I think one trouble is when you have parts like this and the tolerances on the printed part are so close, when you solder these things on, this is going to really strongly define how the holes line up. Um, I'm not sure you really want it that way around. So, this hole looks like it's going to fit okay. It looks like it could probably do with some slacker tolerances, to be honest. This is also a really long screw now for this. Ooh, that's snapping the, uh, stressing the material. But it is in. Let's get this one on here. So how many viewers have we got here that normally wouldn't be able to make it? I'm interested to see if we've got some new audience or if everyone's just stayed up really late. <laughs> Because if everyone's just stayed up really late, I'm not sure <laughs> it's uh, been a worthwhile venture to bother. I'm hoping we'll have a few people that have not been able to view before. That would be lovely. There we go. That's that end stop still. Position's probably not right, but it'll do for now. Not a fan of this piece. This doesn't really be, seem to be doing a whole lot. X, Y, end stop part isn't going to fit well either. I had to make my own. Uh, no, that's a modified Z end stop. So this is the standard one. Uh, you have a thing here and you have a connector and you connect them. But I've actually got, so this modified one over here has a PCB. So normally it doesn't have a PCB. You just kind of solder it directly to it. So that's the plan for today. This is the, um, so these end stop PCBs, I believe are part of the user mods kind of program group thing. And I've always had problems with user mods in that obviously they can add some great functionality. Lots of people have lots of fantastic ideas and it is really nice that lots of people contribute. But sometimes or quite often those are people who have not got the experience to be able to get the tolerances and stuff on parts uh, optimal for lots of people to print them. It's all right that one off they may print okay for just you or for a few people when you're printing on large scale and off lots of different printers you need to kind of be aware of how your assembly, assembly tolerances are going to stack up so that you can make sure that not just one fits but all of them fit we'll see how we get on so i've got this instructions view with every angle so we're straight into this other assembly actually now oh we've got some threaded inserts to do as well Amazing. <laughs> I've forgotten we had that. As a little treat as well, by the way, there is a video coming on the uh, the heated press insert jig tool assembly thing. This. Joseph Presser, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if I can use that. <laughs> Maybe I should ask. <laughs> like, it's clearly not the same, but it's, I don't know if, like, how close you have to be for it to be obvious that that's what you're implying. I mean, it doesn't really suggest anything I know. It's just like using somebody else's name. 
This is not really Joseph's quite common name. Isn't it? So we'll get this heated up. The 300 frame is actually quite small. Yeah, it's compared to the rat rig. It, I mean, the rat rig's like. And this just feels a little bit skinny. Although the size is, yeah, the rat rig size is bigger as well. But then this, I maybe get some additional height because the electronics and stuff are underneath. Oh no, it's not driven by a motor, this. The motor's literally just a counterweight. <laughs> uh, by having it kind of manual, it just means it's super flexible, as in like, you don't have to set anything up or prepare or get everything at the right height or right place. Everything just kind of works. No fussing, no messing. So this is the original part and this is the modified one. You can see this bit, I'm guessing this is where it's mounting. The mounting part here is basically the same. Oh. But instead of mounting end stops independently, it's gonna be on one PCB. No idea if it's going to work. Hopefully it does. Although, as we've already heard their suggestion, it might not. So that looks like one of the parts that I need. Although that has three threaded inserts, mine only has two. Aha, this is one for three. So is there, is maybe that for two different types of, oopsie daisy. I think I'm going to need the two hole one because I think it's for two different types of chain, isn't it? Mine have this two hole arrangement, whereas that three hole arrangement maybe is the Igus chains, which I don't. Oh, I've just noticed this in here. This is obviously a Z end stop bracket for PCB. Huh. Oh, would you look at that? I didn't even know that was in there. So yes, this put those chains back from it. I'm gonna use that two hole variant rather than the three hole variant. But it looks like very luckily it's got extra parts. It's very nice when your supplier thinks of things ahead of you. So hopefully this all works still fine. It looks like it should be. Where's my thread inserts? Macro B-roll of uh, adding threaded inserts to ABS is incredibly satisfying, I can tell you that much. <laughs> so, right, let's see if we can get a decent close-up. Uh, this, I don't want to move all the cameras around, so we're just gonna enlarge a bit, and you'll be able to see. Put this one just a touch further. I think I, I prefer them to have them just flush, uh, sub flush, I mean, so they're just below the surface. Do we have to do these two as well? No, it doesn't look like it. So, yeah, that's that tool. Very simple design, really easy to make. I just used spare parts I already had laying around, and it works so well. Yeah, you can obviously like electrically drive it and have sensors and stops and all this kind of stuff, but sometimes you just want it to do one job really simply, like a drill. You can obviously mount it and electrically move it and all this kind of stuff, like there's loads of options, but sometimes you just want something that will do what you need, you point it and you go. So that's what we got and it's pretty darn good. 
So we've got this other Z end stop PCB. Gonna have to find the right screws. Oh, it might be, nope. Could have been thread inserts on here too, but it's not. In fact, I actually don't know what the hell's going on here. Is this? Nope, definitely not the right size for those. I could probably drill it out the back and use those, but I don't think that's a great idea. Looks like some M3 by eights, judging by how often M3 by eights are used. Yep, that looks like it ought to work. Could be a bit tight. So, looks like this way. Nope. Those holes are in completely the wrong place. So what about the one that I printed myself? That one is perfect. And that connector is not quite aligned to the gap, but it is fitting, so. Gonna be really tight. There's not another way up it could go, is there? No, it's gonna be the only way. Uh, this one. second side in before we tighten the first. This is the problem with bull end um, drivers. What I want is a square end so I can apply some force without it going all weebly wobbly. 2.5, there we go. Ball ends are great but not all the time. That looks pretty good. Nicely mounted connectors available in there. Not sure why there's a really big gap one side and nothing on the other, but there you go. Leave that fix it driver out as well. So my top camera is upside down. Why is it upside down? There we go. So, okay. <laughs> the Vaughan instructions are kind of, they feel like guidelines rather than instructions because they mention some things and they don't mention some things. <laughs> it sort of half feels like you're expected to know the things before. The structures feel like a reminder for things you should already know. Um, so M5, 10, 16 and 30. Uh, 5 by 10. Didn't know I had M5 by 16. Is that a thing? M3 by 16. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, 
That's maybe these. And five by sixteen. So these are the assemblies we did previously that we've got to use now by the looks of it. Um, so this is that, that way up. That does not look like that. Does that look like that? That does. This is like it's going to be easier if I loosen off these other screws a little bit. So we've got to we've got to get that in the end here, like that. But we could. Oh, there you go. It's that easy. Ooh, not compatible with that rubber stopper though. That's got to come out. Which just means we've got to be careful as we're assembling not to drop it off because otherwise the carriage can roly poly straight off the end. And we do have to be very careful because now we do need to take it off because we've got to put the things in here so we can do the thing with the thing. Darn it. Gotta put it back in. So we need to add this way in it. So two M5 slot nuts in the top. In case you missed previously, I've been using an Allen key to get these little things in. They can be a bit of a pain. But I'm right at the end. I could actually just push them in the end here, but So while we're here, just going to line these up externally and then push it in. Oh, there's one from the bottom as well. Hmm. Oh yeah, good idea. <laughs> well, this is this is what I mean. Like when I'm a little bit tired, these things just don't occur. Good idea. Move the stopper up a couple of holes, then it's nothing to worry about. So shove that in there. Those line up. That hole has just vanished. No idea if that's lining up with anything. Feels like it might be. So presumably this goes down here. Uh, this is where maybe we have to be a bit careful of racking starting to begin. Clearly, they're going to be 30s. 10. Uh, let's make these ones all the shiny ones. The bright to zinc plate. Very, very tidy. I can already see it doesn't look straight in there. Let's see if we can get it straighter. You cannot post links, I'm afraid. If you have Twitter, you can post it there and tag me and I'll be able to see it, but not now. 
I can check afterwards if I'm going to replace it if you think it's worth doing. But mine, I mean, mine's fitted at the moment, unless you're meaning something else having problems. Um, so the other end is going here, and we've got to put this on the top by the loops of it. So again, we're going to couple of nuts. I never know which angles to use. I don't think there's a right answer and a wrong answer, but you know. This one on here. I think I've missed that actually. Yep. All that outer smidge. Top camera is shaky. We'll go back to close up one. A few weeks ago, I uh, I modified the top camera so it's fitted to a pole on the desk rather than to a separate boom arm because I thought it would be a good idea. If nothing else, the aim was to sort of save some space because I'm short on space. Unfortunately, in the process of saving space, is this frame rate weird? It looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Uh, in the process of saving that space, I inadvertently made it a bit wobbly. Yeah, mine, yeah. There's not enough clearance. The depth of the bosses is different to that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for twittering it. Let's make... Just a little bit straighter. Best get these things right as we go, I think. Well, as right as we can, anyway. It's looking nice. Installing Y linear rails. The front idlers are our index point for the Y rail installation. Confirm that both idlers are sitting flush with the end of the extrusion. Then install the linear rails such that they are pressed firmly against the back of the idlers. Don't forget to use your rail centre guide. I would have forgotten to use my rail centre guide, so let's grab that now. Oh, I should have two. Where's the other one? There it is. So I'm guessing, despite the fact we just made this, we don't need that right now. These are the motors, are these the idlers? These look like idlers, aren't they? Yes. Um, so, where the dickens is this going? <laughs> Nervous laughter. These two rails. 
these two rails. Let's get these open. Amazing. So we're going to need those M3 nuts. It, do, it is kind of weird that nowhere in the instructions like they don't tell you when you need them, they just like screw into here. Okay, sure. So I'll add the nuts myself then. Like, I mean, it's kind of obvious that you need them, but I don't know, just weird that they're not mentioned as a specific item. So this is odd little assembly to try and get right, isn't it? So you've got one of these and you've got one of these. You've got that coming out that side, so which means that's coming out that side, which means that's sitting in there. Ow. The front eyelids are our index point. Is it talking about this as being the Y rail or this as being the Y rail? This is the white extrusion, right? Not the rail. I forgot to put the nuts in. I can slide them in the end, that's all right. I think. This is so confusing. And that goes on the top. No, underneath. That's right, don't need to watch videos. I'll just make it up as I go along. This one's not quite aligned. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. 
So now we've got the rail on, hopefully in the right place. Let's get that on there, and that on that end, and tighten these down. This one's too tight. I think when you get it really tight, it actually starts to twist the rail and it gives you a weird uh, rough spot sort of thing. That's a working theory. Um, oh, I didn't put it right up against the end. The one thing that I was meant to do. Try again. looks like this. I'm just going to make that flush with that. And then we repeat the process. I don't like how these are just not labelled, it's really weird. I'm so used to the uh, the colours on the, the Allen keys that these screwdrivers are just bizarre. The handles and stuff are all different sizes and the things are different lengths and obviously the hex is a different size. No really clear labelling. It's labelled on the end and on here, but it's just not easy to kind of see at a glance. You have to really inspect it to find out what it is. Yeah, I suppose the second rail should be aligned based on the other rail, but this one's saying, it's not saying don't do that, so. We'll see what we get to. Obviously I can re-loosen it and put it back, so I'm going to, I'm going to do it like this, but I probably, you're right, because it's going to want to move a small fraction either way. Oh yes, this, I'm going to take this apron off. It's too warm and it's rubbing the microphone. Goodbye. Right. Hopefully no more microphone rubbing. Apologies for that. Right, so, yeah, I think I'm going to, I'll leave them like that and I'll uh, give them a wiggle if I need to later on. Ooh. 
left idler, make sure you mount your 20 teeth pulley on your A drive, right side image, opposite to the way we did the B drive, left side image. What? What the F is it talking about? Make sure you mounted your 20 teeth pulley on your A drive, opposite to the way we did the B drive. We're not uh, I'm just going to ignore this message here it makes absolutely no sense. Uh, looks like we need some additional parts because time to hunt through the printed parts box again. We need those, it's not those, that's an X carriage, probably not that. Oh, burner. It's not that, it's not that, here we go. Yeah, it does actually say to use the CAD, and I, I, I do have it available if I really need it. But I'm just going to hope that I, what I've done is okay. Hope is such a great policy. <laughs> Said nobody ever. Uh, these are actually all different. Uh, let's check what we need. These are slightly different ones, so we got yeah. One, two, three, four. I don't know how many I need right now. Maybe two. Uh, M5 by 16. Uh, in general, the build, the rat rig was actually, I don't know, I feel like, because it still took me 12 episodes, but I'm looking at it literally right now, it's just there. And I'm remembering and looking over the complexity of the assemblies and how many printed parts. And this is just seems enormously more complicated. So I reckon, although my memory is not serving me very well, that this build must be more complicated. Oh, that can't be right. What the sausage have I? I've put this rail on the wrong blooming side. How do Blooming Dickens, did I manage that? Hopefully I can slide these all in the end. Right, second time lucky. See now, now I, now I don't. Maybe I did have it out the right way. Yeah, see, this is bonkers. Bonkers. Mm. Is it supposed to be one up the other way and one up the right way? 
Are you saying it's right to what I just changed and now made it wrong? I think I'm going to have to get some CAD. Because <laughs> I'm looking at this diagram here and I'm seeing the big hole and small hole. So I've put them on the side with the big hole, small hole. This is now saying big hole, big hole, big hole, big hole. But my idlers, if I put the rails on the top, oh yeah, that is fine. Yeah, with both rails on the top, one, yeah, that's fine. One idler is high, one idler is low. It's okay. Everyone calm down. It's going to be all right. Yeah, I was doing it with one rail up and one rail down. Yep, 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 we're all good. <sighs> Panic over. So, we're now looking at the top side, and we've got to put these 16s in, so we've got to have some M5 nuts pressed into the end. So, which way are we going to do this? That one's going to have to turn that way, so that one's going to have to turn that way, so let's do that there. Could obviously push them in the end, that'd be easier, wouldn't it? But you know what? I'm doing it this way now. Let's go close up again, shall we? It's difficult to know. Oh. This camera feels a little bit low today. Let me move it up a bit. We might be able to see a bit better. And let me down on it a little bit more. Looks like we've got this side facing down and this part facing away from the rest of the body. So that's going on that way. And then we've got two screws in the top. Now it looks like this is going to be grabbing the belt, so it doesn't seem like there's much point doing them tight at the moment. Flush install. We are going to be indexing things off the front idlers moving forward. Make, take your time and ensure that both idlers are sitting flush to the end of both extrusions. It's super flush, my friend. I mean, there's nothing actually to hold them in place at the moment, so... They're still very much able to move. Maybe that's why we're putting this plate in, is it to hold everything still? Maybe I should tighten them down and loosen them later. Maybe that to be the plan. Let, let's be tightening them down. Oh yeah, it's, it's getting to that time where I start doing weird accents for no reason. <laughs> Plates on the top, that's in there. Uh, now we're on to more drives, more of those plates that we've got to stick on the tops. But what the dickens am I attaching them to and what orientation are they going? Oh, this diagram down here is a bit more useful. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I wish it was more useful. Holy bananas. Um, so, that top camera is going to be hopefully what I'm using to help me lay this out. I need to orient myself within the space. Uh, that's going there. That's going there. That's going here. That doesn't look right. Oh yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, that's on there. Running out of space. <laughs> Where was, oh, that's the X. Where's the other one of these? Oh, here. So that must be going over here. On to here. Right. Right, 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 right. What build size? This will be a 300, 300, 300. Well, it's whatever the 300 version is. Installing AB drive units with your front idlers and linear rails on your wire extrusions. Now we can install the AB drive units. Press these against the linear rail and secure from the top as per the diagram. Yes, sir. I don't know which side the top is. This side. So these are going to go in the same as before. So we're pushing them up against the end, allowing some of the extrusion to poke out the back just a little bit. So you can probably see just a touch sticking out there. So we're pushing it up against the rail. And that on here. And what was it, 16? Yep. Same on the other side. And we'll use the same screw and plate to hold it all together. Again, pushing up against that linear rail to get everything in the right place. Noise, 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 noise. quick drink oh we're an hour in let's do a quick ad sponsorship from the video sponsors takes just a minute and i'll be having a drink this live stream would not have been possible without our sponsors filler farm and big tree tech filler farm are a 3d printing bed specialist based in germany filler print is their high performance durable print surface designed to grip parts tightly when hot but release them when cold their switch system utilizes a strong magnetic sticker and 0.6mm spring steel to allow for easy swapping of bed surfaces. The bed plates offered are made from cast aluminium plate and are extremely flat, helping you get the best adhesion across the whole first layer. All of this can be made to standard sizes or customized upon request. Keep on watching to find out more or follow the links in the video description. 
The Big Tree Tech Octopus is a 32-bit control ball with loads of connectivity options for performance 3D printers like the Voron 2.4 and Ratrig vCore 3. It can connect up to 8 stepper drivers, 8 fans, 6 end stops, 5 thermistors, 4 heaters plus BL Touch, RGB LEDs, a TFT screen, USB-C and more. Pairing the Octopus with TMC2209 stepper motor drivers allows for quiet operation using Stealth Chop, performance using Spread Cycle, and Stool Guard for sensorless homing. Big Tree Tech also offer a mini 12864 display, which is ideal for the Voron 2.4 design. Check the links in the description to find out more. So I'm just looking through for all the bits that we need to finish off this assembly. But I found another motor guide, a rail guide. So I've got a really weird number of these, I think. That's only one more. Well, maybe there's not, oh, they're not needed here, are they? That's maybe why. Of course, Adam, you see. You're silly, silly, because there's no more extra belts. We've done the four belt positions, haven't we? So it looks like, ah, we're going to have to get these nuts in, aren't we? So it's actually a lot, isn't it? Eight. Blimey. We'll slide them in the ends, probably be easier. I'm not worrying too much about extra modification stuff at the moment. I do know about the clicky probe. But I uh, want to get the basic right before I start modifying everything too much. Have they got to stop here? I mean, this. It's a bit wibbly wobbly, isn't it? These are, you can put them in post assembly anyway, so it doesn't really matter whether I put stuff in now or leave it. Just do one each end quick and then I've got to check the bottom because that's got to have these screws in two. And we need to make sure we can access them. Yes, 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 and yes. Let's do some. I expected that would probably be the case, so I'm not worrying too much about it now. Just trying to get it close because yeah, it's nice to be close and then just refine it. Just in case for those that are not realizing or didn't know, these are not going to be the final motors, they're just temporary. I'll switch them out, hopefully later, without hopefully too much difficulty. Although, I could be wrong. Looks like we're still literally three screws from being able to do that, so should be fine. Yeah, this is where Good eye, Matthew. 
G'day mate. When you install your M5 by 10 fasteners, leave the back brace slightly loose. You want this to be able to move in later steps, but don't leave it such that it will pull apart as we're working on it. Okay, well, kind of loose, kind of tight, kind of okay, kind of not. Like, are we assembling it now or are we not assembling it now? So that's that lot in. Now <laughs> it's so cryptic. Uh, this is obviously the underside mounting this previous assembly to this current assembly. But no idea which way is which and putting four screws on one side and two on the other and my assembly looks way too wide. Was Oh, because of that. It doesn't say, well, I don't know which way is forward. Can I decipher from where the rails are? It's just a lot of lines. This is correct. By random chance. Uh, M3 by 16s. Ah. Oh. They're over here, I think. Oh, damn it. Oh, that's the cable. They told him not to bother with the bottom rail. I mean, I did see that as well. But I'm guessing it's easy-ish to remove. So, I mean, I've paid for that rail, so <laughs> I want to use it. <laughs> But yeah, you're right, it kind of, it's, it does seem, I mean, I think I mentioned it when I put it in, actually. It seemed totally unnecessary. <laughs> made it up. Okay, well, conflicting information, so who knows what's true. I didn't watch it, so I have no idea. Uh, micro pod, micro switch pod. So that's the thing that we assembled earlier. Oh, now it matters where this is going, but that's going to go, oh, what? Have I assembled this? This is really, really racked, obviously. But this looks like here, so I'm going to put it here. Although that looks like it's not going to go to anything, which is concerning, but... Sure. It's got a thing in the thing for the thing, so that's okay. And 3 by 30s oh, Another screw! Where's another different screw length? Three by forty, and three by thirty. Two of these.
Okay, okay. Linear rails are not designed to work alone with a single cartridge. You can put a pod. Sorry, Michael, I'm missing like most of what you're saying. <laughs> to apologize. That I'm reading it, but I'm not quite understanding. Obviously, there's delays and whatnot. So, is that assembly done? Do I just put it to one side and start the afterburner? One rail, one cartridge. I'm saying it's inadequate. Oh, by cartridge, do you mean carriage? I would call this a carriage. Hmm. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even move the whole way. I've pushed these into the limit, so that's why. This is obviously not needed to be anywhere near this dimension. Oh, I've got those rubber stops, haven't I? I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, this is what happens when you get really tired. Quarter past midnight. I had not planned to start afterburner today, but I guess if we're there, we're there, right? So we'll do it. Uh, I've just got to find somewhere to put this. I was kind of hoping we'd put it on the printer, but obviously you want the uh, thingy on the thingy before you put it in the other thingy, so I guess that makes sense. Let's move it up over here. It's kind of out of the way-ish for now. Heat sets. Looks like we can do more heated inserts. This is always good news. Presumably there's quite a lot for the carriage because we still have loads left. Right, this is where I'm probably going to start getting super confused because I don't know any of these parts and the afterburner parts so it seems to be the biggest well, the biggest and smallest maze to negotiate. Now, I do have to be a little careful. I am using the afterburner little PCB thing. So, I mean, I could probably assemble it normally and add that in, modify a little bit afterwards.
Uh, I'm going direct drive. At least I'm hoping to go direct drive. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Voron, why are you so complex? Um, so this is where we might find some limitations of my threaded insert rig. And we can just about get that straight, I think. It's about because you have to have a parallel face to that surface that I can place it on the desk. Because otherwise there's, there's no like alignment. Yeah, I think I have that. There's this. A part that I printed. I'm not sure the quality is great. Because I tend to go for maximum speed and minimum quality, but hopefully it's good enough. Ooh, let's make sure everyone can see because this is the best bit ever. Probably the best bit about building Voron. <laughs> Getting to do these with this machine. quick scroll through and see if I can find some others. Yep. It's that tiny little piece. Guessing that's this. This is not going to be very easy to do without burning myself. Let's see how well this works. Surprisingly fine. Will it quits before getting to the hot end build? Nah, really? The thing is, I've only done like an hour and 20 minutes. So we're going to keep going. I'm sure your advice is sensible. But as soon as I've stayed up this late to do this stream at this time. I kind of want to just bow on. So this is just going to move some of this white stress marking on the back. Beautiful. Got the, some of this as well, actually. Don't we? Uh, what other threaded insert parts are there? More. These little things.
that heat gun thing is a heat gun thing. That's exactly what it is. I'll grab it in a second, just going to do these because heat inserts are the best. Woo! So this little heat gun thing is a heat gun thing. So you got in here a lighter that's been lightly modified and that obviously holds the propellant, propellant, flammable fuel. And then this thing just, um, I, I think it's basically one of those piezo crystals. So it, has a spring, releases a spring, hits the crystal, makes a spark, lights the fuel, and makes a... Oh, it's suddenly flaming instead of just heating. Normally it doesn't make a flame, it just heats. Yeah. Some gas is escaping today. Looks like the end's got a bit wobbly for some reason. It's a little heat gun. It's pretty useful. Uh, got another piece, the big tubey piece. If this inserts, ah, this one could be more difficult because this sits squiff on the table. So in order to do that, I need to rest it on this flat face here. So what can I use? What should we do with the drunken sailor? A piece of extrusion would have been lovely, but we've used them all now. <laughs> Uh, oops, is it maybe a fan? Is that enough depth? That's pretty good. Oh, that's not right. Can't be that hole. That's this one. Was easier to assemble Voron or Rat Rig? Um, I'm pretty sure the Rat Rig was easier to assemble. Even though the instructions, if I recall, were not perfect, these instructions are definitely more difficult to follow. I don't think I printed this. This looks really not great. Did I print this? This top looks bizarre. I think I did it in Super Slicer or something with the with ironing. Oh, you're commenting on the lighter, the heater. I've had it for so long. I don't know if you can get them now. That's what it's called. Eroder Microtherm. And then obviously you can use, you just get lighter fluid and you refill this. So you don't have to keep buying lighters. This one lighter 
you have to modify. I think there's normally like a wheel, isn't there, here? So that's gone because it doesn't make, I'm pretty sure that's what makes a spark normally. Whereas now you just have a lever which releases the gas. Perhaps you can put it in the right way around. If I recall, it was quite expensive to buy, so I was a bit apprehensive about getting it initially because I was like, it can't possibly be be worth that much. But it is. <laughs> it's one of the most useful tools I have, and it's it's one of those things that you either uh, I don't know is there aren't many alternatives that are kind of small and neat for doing that sort of thing. You've got electric heat guns which take ages to warm up, take huge amounts of power, and are normally absolutely huge. Or like big blow torches or kitchen blow torches and stuff like that, whereas that's just like pretty dinky and suitable for 3D printing sort of stuff. 24 quid on Amazon. See, to me that seems like quite a lot, doesn't it? So this should be, yeah, this is Dragon. So still more threaded inserts needed. Maybe we'll just do all these threaded inserts today. <laughs> because it's the best. So this is going to be a difficult one. We've got a completely irregular shape. Don't know what it's for, some sort of levery thing. Uh, and we've got to put something in the end. So this is a, do as I say, not as I do. So don't do this, but it's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hold it directly under here. Hopefully point it up and go straight in. Easy peasy. Yeah, I didn't think that was particularly unsafe at all, actually. <laughs> it was so easy to do. Um, is this that part? So that needs a... This part looks absolutely disgusting, it really does. And that does not look like that at all. I don't know why. Is there another piece that looks like that? That's that, but it's got that hole in. That's the difference here. Ah, oh, that looks like a threaded insert hole. Yes, boy. Let's stick that in there. Oh, it's not going in very well. It looks like there isn't one in the front here. I think it's been moved. We've got this part. That's not that other piece. We've got this part. That's also not that piece. Got some more parts in here. Is that it? That's that. No, it's not. No, that's not it. That's not it. Man, am I just stupid? Mine looks totally different. So this part needs some in. This is going to be difficult. This is, there's nothing to support this. Uh, I want something under here, really. Something just literally block of wood would be perfect because you're low risk of damaging anything. But I don't think I have anything suitable. So we have to improvise. This might be a, a bad idea, but I'm gonna use a power supply. <laughs>
It did get an update, so it might look a bit different. It's harder for them up, update manual. I would say it looks a lot different. Ah, that's the belt thing, isn't it? So we don't need that one. That's the other belt type. I don't mean belt. I mean chain guide thing. It's just a lot of parts. So this is obviously going on there. Zoom me out a bit. It's presumably going somewhere there. It's going there. We don't want that. That presumably is going on there. That presumably goes on that. So does that? Nope. Hang on. That goes that way up. That goes on there. That goes around there. Right. That's flush there. Goes in there. That's obviously the carriage mount that goes at the back of all of that. So I think that goes on there somewhere. That goes on the back, that's back, that's back, that's back. Okay. So that's what our assembly is going to look like, I think. How we get there is a bit of guesswork now because it's it looks really quite different to the manual. So it looks like I need to insert in here. Maybe here. This is kind of not super great, eh? That looks like a thing. I think there's going to be one this side as well, but not totally sure. That looks like it should go there. And this one looks like it should go here. I think there's going to be one here, but I'm not sure at the moment. It might just be... You know, that was that way, so that's maybe going on this, is it? Don't know how that works, so...
Oh. Clockwork heat sets. There's a location shown on this page. Take note of the different cable chain mounts and use the one that best fits your build. So these are the parts I've done. But again, mine are totally different. <laughs> oh, there's not one here, so we could have a problem there. That one's got one on the side. What part's that? That's got a Voron label on the back. That's here. Let's get that in. Hmm. Not much to guide this one. Right. Okay, let's stop the inserts for a bit and see if we can do some assembly. Just feel like I'm drowning in parts at the moment. I'm suddenly quite hungry too. Not that that's particularly relevant. <laughs> uh, let's have a quick as spot while I have a quick drink. This live stream would not have been possible without our sponsors, Philofarm and Big Tree Tech. Philofarm are a 3D printing bed specialist based in Germany. Philoprint is their high performance, durable print surface designed to grip parts tightly when hot, but release them when cold. Their switch system utilizes a strong magnetic sticker and 0.6 mm spring steel to allow for easy swapping of bed surfaces. The bed plates offered are made from cast aluminium plate and are extremely flat, helping you get the best adhesion across the whole first layer. All of this can be made to standard sizes or customized upon request. Keep on watching to find out more or follow the links in the video description. The Big Tree Tech Octopus is a 32-bit control board with loads of connectivity options for performance 3D printers like the Voron 2.4 and Ratrig vCore 3. It can connect up to 8 stepper drivers, 8 fans, 6 end stops, 5 thermistors, 4 heaters plus BL touch, RGB LEDs, a TFT screen, USB-C and more. Pairing the Octopus with TMC2209 stepper motor drivers allows for quiet operation using Stealth Chop, performance using Spread Cycle and Stool Guard for sensorless homing. Big Tree Tech also offer a mini 12864 display which is ideal for the Voron 2.4 design. Check the links in the description to find out more. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Excuse me. Excuse me. So let's get these in here. So first off, I've just noticed having put loads of heat sets in, it's now you like use some M3 nuts. But there's not a hole for M3 nuts, so what the dickens? I know there is. That one's mildly hexagonal, this one just looks round. Why is it not just heated inserts? Maybe it is. Uh, let's grab a couple of those and the M3 by 30 screws and we'll see where we get to. We might just... I think that hole's gonna be too big for an insert now. Yep. <laughs> So, for some reason we're putting a hexagonal peg in a round hole. Let's 
sorry, that's a bit of a rubbish camera angle, isn't it? Let's get a bit closer in. That one's just round is the way because you, if you use a hall effect end stop, a magnet goes there. Okay, that seems weird. Laser tools. That sounds like a Chinese brand, doesn't it? Ah, yeah, that looks like the ticket, doesn't it? Ah, oh, the tip looks identical. I bet the insides are exactly the same. Is it refillable using? Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> I have the same addiction. You start looking at stuff and you're like, oh, I could get, yeah, mm, yeah, I like that. Mm. <laughs> Cinema links in my live stream <laughs> trying to put me off. This part is, has a sort of, it's kind of beautifully complex. <laughs> it's nice with 3D printing parts, how much detail and functionality you can get into a single part without it being extortionately expensive. It's just glorious. Can you imagine having just like CNC mill or something like that? Or, I mean, I don't know if you even could. Sure you could, there's always a way, but holy balls. 3D printing for the win. got a ooh. so M3 by 20 with this thing and that thing that looks like a proby thing we've got a big big boy proby thing Omron probe the full expensive dealio it's like 60 quids worth of sensor Not super clear which way round mine goes because it looks a little bit different to that, but it's kind of squarey, so I'm guessing it's not going to make too much a difference. Uh, M3 by 20s, another different length screw which I don't have. There we go. Did you print the parts yourself? Just curious about some of the non standard parts. Uh, I did not print them myself, I got them through the Print It Forward scheme. These are going through here. I have a feeling these are not going to be long enough. No, these are not long enough. My probe is a little bit different to the normal dimensions by the looks of it. So we're going to need longer screws. How much longer, sir? Maybe five mil, I think. Thirties might be a bit too long. Mm. 
Hmm. Anyone? No, that's probably going to be problematic. I think I've got some M3 by 25s. Oh, bit of my cables caught. Two screws. Ah, is this going to be a problem? The fact that this is not flush. I wonder if it might be. You know, shall find out soon enough. I strongly suspect this is going to be a problem. Uh, this these printed parts were actually printed back in April, so it was probably the latest version in April. I've been planning this for quite a while. <laughs> Where's M3 by 12s then? M3. 3 by 6. Oh, that's the 12. Yeah, the website did look like a kind of normal thing. Yeah, as you say, it's, it's the kind of name that makes you sound sounds like it's a scam, doesn't it? Buttonhead option. If you happen to have some. M3 by 8 button head laying around, you can use those here. It can make belting the gantry in later steps a little easier, but it's not a big deal if you don't have them. I can't be bothered to go and get them, so we're just going to use this one. Maybe I'll regret it, who knows. Ah, are we mounting? We are. Hmm, yes. Gonna have to go get me gantry back. <laughs> Up the way, coming through. <laughs> Sliding all over the place. Oh.
Leave these loose if you need to learn the rail before tightening. See Discord if you need help with the correct procedure. Why didn't it tell me to put this little black piece in before I screwed the other piece on? What am I doing wrong here then? That seems to be right. to maybe loosen these uh, slightly. Symmetrical. Why not the 350 build volume? Uh, partly to match the rat rig for doing comparison. Partly because I don't feel I need any larger than 300. Partly because it just gets too big. <laughs> like 300 is already an enormous printer, to be frank. Well, it is for the kind of stuff that I print anyway, so. I just don't have that much room. The only reason I didn't go for the smallest one is so that I can make it the same as the rat rig. It did just say don't tighten these tightly, didn't it? <laughs> what did I do? Go in and tighten them. M3 by 30 and a hex nut. I suppose it wouldn't matter that I tighten them because it's uh, I'm not tightened to anything. Both of these ends are, I oh know, that one's hexagonal shaped. Done that tight, but then just backed it off. Hopefully, it should still be grabbing the nut. There we go. Plenty of wibble wobble still in that. Can't 
cutting belts. Cutting belts seems like a nightmare waiting to happen. I think we might call a pause there. We're just at two hours. Just under, sort of. But. Got the carriage started, so that's looking pretty cool. Happy with the progress we've made today. Everything has gone reasonably well, I think. It's a lot of printed parts. I mean, this is just saying put the belts on. I'm not necessarily going to be tightening them all in place yet. But I'm going to do that, I think, the start of the next stream. So we'll call this, because I was only planning to do gantry today, so this is like mostly just gantry stuff. Obviously, we've put a part of the afterburner on, but we've still got plenty of afterburner to deal with around that. So, there we go. We have made it to the end of today's stream. Hopefully that was really useful for some of you and that different time schedule has been helpful for some people to be able to join in that weren't able to previously. It may be a long time before we do another one at this time. It's <laughs> not super convenient. So, hopefully that kind of wasn't an assembly guide, but hopefully it's given you some insight if this is something you're following along with giving you a helping hand if that's something you needed, or maybe just entertaining to watch me struggle through it. <laughs> it's definitely not one of the easiest builds I've done. The instructions are a little bit, uh, how should we say, vague. I mean, the information's there, it's just you kind of have to forcefully extract it. But we're getting there. Things are looking good. I really like the styling. The color looks pretty sweet as well. So I think this is, I think it's going to turn out okay in the end. Whew. So thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, the next live stream will be soon. That's about as much as I know. Probably Saturday-ish, maybe. But it won't be US timing, it'll be back to more UK sensible timing. So I'll see you then if you're able to join in at that time. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.